Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're taking a look at the new Netflix Transformers War for Cybertron, Optimus Primal, and Rat Trap. These are one of two new Voyager 2 packs in the third and presumably final wave of the Netflix subline. And they are just straight read echoes of Kingdom, Optimus Primal, and Rat Trap. Done up in colors that, for the most part, more closely resemble their on-screen appearances. At least, their classic Beast Wars on-screen appearances. Uh, judging by some early trailers, it looks like there's going to be quite a bit of difference in, you know, how they look on the show. But we'll see how that pans out once the show is really actually released in, you know, a higher definition. This two-pack is Wavemates with a Sparkless Seeker two-pack containing some small uh, Sparkless Battlemasters for, I don't know, reasons. And this particular one may not be everyone's cup of tea. Uh, I think it's mainly aimed at people that didn't pick up the Kingdom versions of Optimus and Rat Trap, though they were pretty readily available, so... I don't know, this might be more of a niche thing for people that just are more completionist or want more screen-accurate versions of the toys. So if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at the toys packaging, then we're going to open it up. We'll see the figures themselves in both their beast and robot modes. Naturally, I'll be doing comparisons with other versions of the characters. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So these two come in, you know, what is your pretty standard $40 Voyager 2 pack for Netflix. You know, they never did just Voyagers. They always had some sort of pack-in partners, whether that was Battlemasters, Micromasters. So this is no different. However, instead of having a pair of really small guys, we get a core class figure in the form of Rat Trap, which still comes out to be about the same value when you look at, you know, what they're priced for individually. It's kind of hard to make out, but you can see, you know, there's a maximal uh, faction symbol print on the back, and then, like, it's superimposed over what looks like artwork of Optimus's gorilla form, which you can actually see here on the side. So there's that, another maximal symbol. Nothing special on the top, just branding and an Autobot logo. And then on the back, you get renders of the toys. And they do seem to be more lightly colored than the figures themselves. Particularly, Optimus's uh, grays and blues are a lot darker on the finished product, which is okay. Um, I think they're a little bit too light, too saturated here. And then Rat Trap, he's kind of the same, but they kind of have this weird thing going on with the nose where you can tell they did like a really quick Photoshop to give that light gradient effect on the nose, but now it's just kind of like a stark contrast to the rest of them, so they didn't, didn't do so hot there. Uh, they take 34 and 19 steps to transform, respectively. You can see Optimus, he has the gorilla hand symbol representing his beast mode, and Rat Trap just gets the little rat symbol there. Very Zodiac-like, huh? And then on the side, you just get the very saturated version of your kingdom side panel. Okay, here's our instruction book for the two. You get Optimus up top, Rat Trap on the bottom, usual branding. Then here, it looks like we get straight into Optimus's transformation, complete with the, uh, you know, sword storage. Also, how to flip out his little wrist blasters, how to make him hold the swords, all that fun stuff. So, looks like it just lifted directly from the Kingdom Instructions, which is not surprising. We finish up his transformation across the top, and then we get to Rat Trap. How to get him properly transformed from how he's in the package. How to store his weapon, have him hold it, and then transformation to rat mode. So, nothing really new here, just their two standard instructions combined together. And now we can see our two Maximals in their beast modes. Optimus still turns into a gorilla, who can optionally store his swords on his back, like so. And one thing you might notice, he's cast in, you know, primarily darker colors on certain areas, uh, especially the gray areas, right here. And, yeah, that's, I mean, that's really the only big difference, that and they finally swapped out the blue feet for more accurate gray, so I like that. Rat Trap is the least changed overall. They really just gave him a different shade of brownish gray for his fur color and all that. That's, that's about it. <laughs> Nothing else has really changed all that much. So, really, they're just kind of darker versions of their Kingdom counterparts. Here we can see Optimus with his said Kingdom counterpart. And like I said, biggest difference is different grays used. The eyes are still pretty much the same color. It looks like his blues, 
especially here like you know on the sword handles they're done up in a slightly darker shade and then the silver paint uses more of like a gunmetal gray now to kind of match his face and chest and all that and then there's the differently colored feet which is interesting i wonder how they did that right because for some reason they made the regular optimus's feet blue and i assume that was just because of the way the mold was laid out so you'd expect his to be blue too and I don't think they changed the plastic colors or anything else to fix that, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they did that. They actually recast the mold somehow or gated it off differently. I don't know. But overall, um, you know, they look more or less the same. The darker grays here are obviously much closer to those used on Optimus Primal's CGI model from the Beast Wars cartoon. And presumably how, you know, more like how he'll look in Kingdom. I'm not entirely sure yet, though, because I think... I think we've only seen his robot mode in the trailers, so it's kind of hard to tell. Additionally, this also just makes him look more like a real-life gorilla, because, as you know, gorillas that have black fur tend to have very, very dark-colored skin, like almost black itself. So, yeah, this does look a little more realistic. This honestly leaves the Kingdom version looking a bit more like the original toy, which used a, you know, a much lighter shade of gray and all that, so... I guess that's one way you could justify having these both in your collection. You get like screen accurate or a little more toy accurate version. I don't know. Honestly, the biggest selling point to get this version over this one, or you know, even if you have this one, is probably the gray feet. Because everybody was kind of annoyed about the blue feet on Primal. So now that that's fixed, this might be the superior one. And now here's Rat Trap with his Kingdom counterpart. And like I said, biggest difference is just the shading used, right? Much darker brown or gray color. Um, it does look like that the skin tones for the feet are also altered to be more yellowish here. So that's interesting. The actual orange bits don't appear to be any, you know, significantly different at all. I think that's more or less the exact same shade of plastic. So, yeah, just a darker rat trap. Um... Easily one of the least interesting recolors in Netflix, which is kind of saying a lot, because the Netflix line has had some real duds where you're just like, why is this necessary? Like, I think back to, like, uh, the Netflix Impactor, right? You're like, what, so he just uses a dirtier yellow now? That's that's the new toy? Wow, cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, um, again, not a huge difference here. Um, like with Optimus, the darker shade does seem to be more screen accurate. So if you are going for a very screen accurate Beast Wars cast, you know, even though it's not a marked difference, this is probably still the way to go. All right, now we got our two guys in their robot modes. And if you wanted to see the transformations for those, be sure to check out the individual reviews for the Kingdom versions. I cover those there. Uh, but looking at these guys, you can see again, just Pretty dark tones, but everything more or less seems to be in the right place. One thing I noticed is that Primal does lose a little bit of paint in this release. These little lines right here, these outer lines, were painted like a gray or silver color on the Kingdom one. I'll show you that in a moment. And they left them unpainted here, so that's unfortunate. Uh, everything else seems to be the same, so it's pretty minor detail. I barely noticed it. Um, and then you just see some slight color, you know, changes that they made. Uh, Rat Trap, he's, as far as I can tell, just a one-for-one -one recolor. Like, nothing added or subtracted, just darker tones for the most part. As far as their tolerances, everything still appears to be the same. Like, everything's nice and tight, nothing too wobbly. Rat Trap's knees are a little, little on the loose side, but they already were, so, yeah. Didn't really get worse, just the same old problems. Uh, Primal's the same way, though in fact, one thing I did notice is that one particular thing got a bit looser and not in a bad way. His wrist-mounted guns here, on the Kingdom version, I have to use an object, usually I end up using the um, little handle for his swords, to like really push the thing through and force it through. It doesn't really want to go with just finger pressure alone. Uh, this guy doesn't have that issue. His guns pop out a little more smoothly. So I don't know if that's just an individual QC thing or maybe a slight improvement they made, but I do have an easier time with the guns for this version. Um, so yeah, I mean, same toys more or less, just darker hues all around, much more Netflixy. 
because their subline does tend to be a little more grim dark version of the standard War for Cybertron toys. You know, they tend to air toward darker colors and more dirtying effects, and the trend continues here. Here we get our comparison shot with the Kingdom Optimus Primal in robot mode. And these are the lines I was mentioning, right? Can you see those right there and there? They seem to have been painted, and it's almost barely noticeable because it's like silver on gray. But it is there. Oh, I guess, you know what? This little band across the top lost some paint too. And maybe they just left those out because they realized that the difference is pretty negligible. You'll also notice that these little silver details here, right there in the corners, have just been painted blue this time. Again, pretty small difference. Um, they also swapped out using a light blue shade for a gray or silver shade here. So, yeah, they definitely made some slight modifications. Uh, I won't lie, I do prefer the chest coloration on the Kingdom version, just a little more vibrant. I like that like light metallic blue against the darker blue, but pretty, pretty small difference. Again, you get the infamous feet. They are the proper color this time, so that's very cool. And overall, it's, you know, same thing with the beast modes. I just get more of a, uh, you know, 90s toy vibe from this guy and more of a CGI model vibe from this one. So, you know, I guess it's up to personal taste there, which one you think is better. Though I think most people can agree that gray feet is an improvement. That was like the big miss to a lot of people with the Kingdom Primals. Just like, why are his feet blue? And now we can see that they don't necessarily have to be because they managed to crest, uh, cast them in gray here without changing the plastic colors on anything else, at least as far as I can tell. I mean, can you guys see any, any changes in plastic colors? Like, everything looks the same to me. Everything that was blue on this guy is blue on this one besides the feet, so... I don't know. I am glad they made the uh, the change, though, because I just I think it looks a lot better. It really brings them closer to how we should look. And then here we get our Rat Trap comparison. Again, mainly just darker colors. Now you can see all of the silver on the toys, and you'll notice that they went with a much, much darker silver for the Netflix release. Pretty much the same gunmetal color as uh, Primal Swords there. And that's a pretty, pretty stark contrast to the uh, Kingdom version, which uses a much lighter, more polished looking silver. Again, you'll notice the different browns used, the different skin tones. I will say, I, I think I prefer the skin tone of the Kingdom Rat Trap. This one right here, the yellowing effect almost, I don't know, it almost makes Rat Trap look sickly. Kind of like his liver's failing him or something, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I kind of wish they had kept the feet the same color. Cause I, I don't really like the new coloration. It looks off to me. Looks like Rat Trap isn't feeling so hot these days. That's just me. Maybe that's just the way I perceive the color. Just It looks, I don't know. It, it looks like someone who's in the hospital. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Um, and again, I do really prefer the light silvers on this one. So... The, the rat traps are a little more give and take for me than the primals. I'd say about half the coloration is better and then half of it's worse. So it's not really a win-win. Uh, it's it's kind of like Cheetor where, you know, you made some gains with the Netflix version and then also took some losses in the form of lost paint and stuff. So this one's not as cut and dry. I think, honestly, I'm feeling the Kingdom one just a little bit more, even if his fur color might be a, a tad too light to mimic, you know, how he looked in the show. The Netflix rat trap, it, it's, it looks like you're watching him through a TV screen and somebody turned the brightness way down, you know? Like, he's, just, he's a little too dark. And since I keep mentioning him, let's bring out our Netflix Cheetor, just so we can get a group shot of all three of the Netflix Beastie Boys here. They're more show accurate colors. And I gotta say, they do look nice together. Um, they really kind of carry that same general aesthetic of kind of like a dark metallic finish all around. Almost on the level of being like premium looking. Now as a quick aside for anyone that doesn't know, these two we just found out are getting some very interesting retool slash recolors here. So if you haven't seen it already, this Cheetor is going to be heavily retooled into Beast Wars Ravage. 
So that's awesome and it looks phenomenal. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. And then Optimus here is getting recolored as a Nemesis Primal as part of the Worlds Collide multi-pack, which is odd, but also interesting because surprisingly that's never been done before. You'd think they would have done that at some point, right? With all the Nemesis Primes out there. We had the Galva, uh, was a Galva Convoy, which is like the evil Lyo Convoy. We had the uh, Nemesis Prime that looked like a uh, big convoy and all that. But we never did get an evil Optimus Primal. So they actually are finally doing that. And he looks to be taking some inspiration from, you know, your standard Nemesis Prime, as well as Galva Convoy with like the heavy purple use. And he's got a new head too that's actually going to um, replace the open mouth with the shut faceplate, like the original Primal toy. So very cool. Just wanted to let you guys know about that if you haven't seen it yet. So, you know, it's going to be a Ravage, it's going to be a Nemesis Primal from these molds. So, I'm digging that. Plus, there's also the, you know, previously leaked Shadow Panther. So, this guy's getting all sorts of black red echoes. All right. So, yeah, I just wanted to pull Cheetor out to showcase just how good these guys are coming out. Again, Rat Trap, bit more of a mixed bag. I think the silvers they went with are too dark, even for his on-screen appearance. And again, the skin tone, it's just, it's odd. It really doesn't match anything that I can think of. I think they are just going for like darker, right? They're just like, well, we need to change enough for it to not be the same toy. And they just, <laughs> just darkened everything that they could, except for the orange, interestingly. Orange is about the same exact shade, so I don't know what's going on there. All right. Gone and busted out my turntable that I kind of sort of just forgot I had the last couple reviews, so sorry about that. Now, this kind of, you know, is where we wrap up the review and just give a, a final thought thing while we watch our toys slowly spin in place for that nice 360 view. I took someone's advice and hid the cord out of the way, too. Looks a little more professional, almost like I know what I'm doing. So, yeah, this set is an interesting one, right? Because it's the first of these uh, Voyager multi-packs where they include a core class figure instead of like Micromasters or Battlemasters. But it does come out to be about the same value, right? 10 bucks to 10 or like 12 bucks. Um, overall, I like this set. It's definitely something worth picking up if you don't already have the standard versions. If you do have those versions, it's a little iffier. I will say that overall, these are probably the better representations of the characters when it comes to the screen accuracy, especially in Optimus's case. Rat Trap, there's an argument to be made for the Kingdom version. I think uh, I think you could say that that one might be a little bit better. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, not the most exciting release, because again, it's just re-releases of standard War for Cybertron toys. But I will say I am happier with this pack overall than I was the standard release. I, I do very much prefer the colors on Optimus, which, let's face it, is the main sell here. Rat Trap's just kind of the pack and accessory. So if you don't have them, pick this up. It's a good value for the two toys. If you do already have them, they're really not a must-have. I mean, the standard versions do the job well enough. Unlike the Kingdom Cheetor, which I thought was just abysmally done. I mean, it just did not convey the same, you know, essence of the character's colors and all that. So that one is, it's really up to you. If you want to drop the 40 bucks and get, you know, different versions of these guys that might be a bit more screen accurate, if you got the money to blow, you know, go for it. I think you'll like these versions. And again, the tolerances are still really good, so you don't have to worry about mold degradation, anything like that. Um, it's weird because I kind of like this Two pack a little more than their Wave Mate, even though the Wave Mate's a new character. And of course, I'll talk about why that is once I get to that review. So, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think of these? Do you see yourself picking them up? Are they worth, you know, double dipping? Or have you kind of been holding out in the hopes that we'd get something like this? I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. If you're interested in becoming a member of the channel and unlock certain things like fun little members-only live chats, early access to monthly Q&A videos where I will actually answer like user-submitted questions, make sure to check out that join button down there and you can join for as little as two bucks a month. 
So I thank you all for joining me for this look at the new Transformers Netflix War for Cybertron, Optimus Primal and Rat Trap. And with all that said, I will see you next time.